Now, with the origins of agriculture, with the increasing reliance on harvested food crops for human survival, we also begin to see the appearance of sedentary existence. We see the first evidence of populations some 12 to 15,000 years ago that weren't mobile, but rather stayed in the same area for extended periods of time. And there's a lot of evidence that goes along with this. For example, we begin seeing the first evidence of permanent structures, structures that aren't mobile and meant to be moved from one place to another from season to season or from year to year. We also begin seeing the evidence shortly thereafter, for example, of storage elements, like ceramic pottery, allowing you to store elements from time to time. Now, but the movement to sedentism is coupled with a movement to what we might think of as urbanism, an increasing aggregation of populations. If you're a mobile foraging population, if you're a mobile hunter-gatherer population, you can only support a certain density of people. That density dictated by the technology you have that allows you to extract resources out of your environment. As you're relying on a more low-risk food product like harvested grains, you can suddenly begin to increase your density tremendously. You can grow populations and you can support them from material gathered from the local environment through the own artificial changes you've instilled within that local environment. So we can see this really as the beginning of urbanism, increasing concentration of individuals into a small local environment. Now we might think of urbanism as a product of the 18th or 19th centuries, but really the process starts with this transition, the transition to a harvested food-based agricultural economy that begins to allow people to aggregate. And this transition to urbanism has an important evolutionary consequences. It changes our environment tremendously. One of the things we'll see in the next segment is a movement to dense urban lifestyles, even if that density is fairly mild back in the middle of the Neolithic. It's a change in the kind of exposures we have to diseases, to infectious diseases, and to parasitic elements. So we'll talk about that shortly.